serving the most inspiring and phenomenal communities of wine lovers. As we all know, wine is the catalyst of the greatest discussion. We'll be talking wine, but of course food, and everything that touches all our nation and senses. Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. Welcome to JCB Live, a very unique happy hour. Why unique? Because we live tonight again, and this is one of the last day of the year. And we're going to be with an incredible man. He is out of Colorado. He's one of the veterans of the food industry. But as we know, difficult times in 2020. We hope 2021 will be better, and he's going to show us how. He decided, after such a phenomenal success in the food world, to leave it, in a way, and start an amazing organization named Food Service Power Plant Network. This is a very exciting group. We're going to be sharing tonight discussions together about his past, his present, his future, his motivation, his passion, and of course, what makes him who he is today. On top of it, he married Patrick Egan, twin sister. So we hope tonight we're going to know some of the fabulous secrets of Patrick's life, and more importantly, the intricacies of being a twin. Woo! Woo! Dear friends, did you see? 2021 is full of surprise. It wants to come now. So 21 for 2021. Jason, bonsoir, cher ami. Hello, John Charles. How are you? Now, much better than I could toast with you on this miraculous year that we're about to embark into. So I need to have a close toast with you. I'm in my little bird nest. Here we go. I'm going to pop this with you. Here we go. Yeah, show me how you're going to do this. I want bubbles all over, all over your wife. Tonight. <laughs> yes, you did it. There we go. We pulled it off. Hey, can you can you believe all those years of training, of opening the corks? You better agitate the bottle like this tonight. Let me show you what you're going to do with your lovely wife. Okay, show me. <laughs> <laughs> I had to redo the curtains anyhow. <laughs> I was going to say, call the carpet cleaner. <laughs> hey, you know what it does when you do that in your bedroom specifically? It adds an amazing sense of smell. That great energy of all about the senses that come at play and to play. So when she's laying down tonight okay. and you come in with your red pyjama, silk, of course, yep, and you yep. suddenly unveil your chest, you do that with the bottle and suddenly she will become the queen that she's always been, and then you'll see what happens. I cannot tell you. We'll have to do another live for you to relate it to us. <laughs> you got it. Um, I need to find the red silk robe, but we can pull that off. Um, well, you know, you can paint your body red too. It's another option. You are just Captain Creative. I love it. There's so many options here. <laughs> so, Jason, I know we have all your friends as well who – you know, follow you with a lot of interest and naturally we are now. And you have all our friends as well. So we need to ask you a question. Okay. The first one, how was it for you to make a decision in your life, which is always very important. And we have the turn of 2020 going to 2021. Time of resolution, we make our list, we make our wishes. How did you do this? And how did you have the guts to do it? And what motivates you to do that and to do the next thing? Well, that's a, that's a great question. And um, to all um, high to your community, to all the food service power plant people, welcome. We've got John Charles Boisset here. Obviously, we'll be drinking some beautiful wine tonight, sharing stories, talking life, heart, passion. Um, and uh, we're, we're so glad to have everyone. So for me, John Charles, so I am still... In, uh, in the food service world, I work for an awesome company out of California called, called Cow Mill out of Oceanside. Um, and the food service power plant network came. So I plan to leave my last job, my company. That's right. Uh, 
March 20th, a week after COVID began. And that had been planned for eight months to, so that I could have more time at home with Shannon and the kids and we could have, I could just be more present. And um, COVID hit, all our vacation plans changed and my upcoming job got pushed back a few months. So I found myself uh, without a job for the first time in my life. And I had spent a lot of my 20s working through just um, challenging stuff right in my head, anxiety, depression, and so forth. And I spent the last decade learning positive mindset tools, change yeah. psychology. And so I started offering that to our community. The food service community, of course, was hurting, Amazing. was really challenged. And so it was a moment where I said, okay, what do people need right now in my world who are frankly afraid? And you know what? They need community because there were people literally just alone in their apartment, afraid to go out because they didn't know what was going on. So they need uh, community. They need some encouragement. They need some rah-rah, some pump me up, some motivation, some you can do this. And then they needed positive mindset tools. They needed positive psychology, things that really made an actual practical difference in the way they viewed the world. And so that's what that's what we've spent the last nine months doing in the Food Service Power Plant Network. But that's amazing. So you, you had this idea and it conquered obviously with the national and international events. So what a timing. And then you just started, but explain to all of us, how do you just start this? Because it's not easy to start anything in this world, specifically in the most difficult time, probably in the last 50 years. Well, to start it, I think I YouTubed, how do I take a video of myself? Um, <laughs> and so, I mean, everything, I had never done that. I had never done a video of myself and put it out there. I threw it on LinkedIn. I emailed it I to a lot of our customers. Private, typically, I've seen a few, but it was <laughs> not network, sorry. <laughs> I know, it's uh, that, that, well played, well played, touche. So, I, you know, I just started Googling that and I Googled what kind of microphone and I Googled, how do you do a Facebook Live? All these things I'd never done as a way to connect with people and a way yeah. to offer this stuff. And I just started trying it. And, you know, I've, it's been different backgrounds and different scenes and different things to to learn. I mean, I'm not afraid to fail and I'm not afraid to learn. And so it's a lot of progress and, and taking baby steps along the way. So that's what you advise to people who are tonight and in the next few days thinking, I want to do something else to just go for it and not be afraid. Yeah, I, you know what? I think it was uh, Thomas Edison who said, you know, I didn't, um, I didn't fail at making the light bulb. I just found ten thousand ways that didn't work. Right. So I don't you look at about Thomas Edison, and suddenly Patrick is touching the, the light. So <laughs> the lights light, are going on. Influence on your brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're connected. We're connected here, and we're just vibing one another. Um, you know, yeah, I would say a key component to anything you want to try new is to get rid of judgment on yourself. To yeah. get rid of that idea that you failed because judgment and the idea of failure stops any energy, it crushes it. You, you want to be able to say, you know what, I'm learning. It's a growth opportunity. I'm moving forward. I'm always figuring it out. Uh, done is better than perfect. And in that way, it frees the energy to keep growing out of uh, curiosity as yeah. opposed to just shutting down out of fear. Or, Man, that didn't work. I should just stop. But what amazes me, Jason, and I think you, you, you should touch on that is you were very successful in your previous business that you were a part owner of, you decide to move on and to change your life, join another business, and in between start that. How do you decide to actually leave something successful? That's a great question. Um, I would say you have a conversation with your wife about what really matters and um, and wow. how we're how we're, discussions. <laughs> It was, well, yeah, I mean, and later tonight, we'll, you know, we'll be doing this, but um, it, it's, we'll have the champagne out, but, you know, we're just talking life and we recognized, you know what, um, I'm not as present. Um, our family doesn't feel yeah. as connected. And it had been that that way for some time. And I'd been trying to figure it out and struggled to do that. And so it was just time to say, let's just make a change. Let's try something new and see what happens. Um, and um, so, you know, it was... It was great. John, John Charles, here's a question for you. Okay, so <laughs> so for, for all, all of our- That is a conversation tonight, I know. I, I love it. I No, I love it. Um, okay, so for our community who wants to get to know you, everyone at the Food Service Power Plant Network, you, um, you're a part, you, you run Boisset Collection, you grew up in wine in France, yes? And then you moved over to the States. So can you just tell us 
it seems all so romantic, right? And beautiful. And I saw a picture of you holding grapes. So I'm sure there's, you know, it's earth and it's dirt and it's grapes and it's hard work and it's all of it. So what's it like growing up in wine? And then why'd you decide to come to the States and what was your dream in doing so? Well, as you describe it, it sounds like a fairy tale. So I'm going to tell you, it is exactly this, you know, very fortunate, born into a living room where my parents started to make wine. So my cradle was actually a, a half barrel. You know, okay. my food, besides my mother's lovely out, output, was actually Pinot Noir from the Côte de Nuit of Burgundy. So I was very fortunate to be cradle in wine, to be born in the world of wine, to have one of my best friends as Mother Nature, and to have amazing parents, an incredible family, and phenomenal grandparents who were a true inspiration to the United States. And this is how you could link you know, France to the US. I come from a generation uh, born in the late 60s where you're very close with your family, you live with your parents and grandparents, and you really live the war by all the stories you hear because it was not that far away. Yeah. The American came, freed France, but freed Burgundy as well. And my parents were, grandparents were resistant. So always America in every single discussion as a child. So always been curious about it and got the pleasure to come, Jason, when I was 10 and a half, you know, a year and a half younger than your beautiful daughter. And it was an epiphany moment. I love the US. I felt the electricity of the energy of the US. I felt the sense of possibilities. I felt the enthusiasm. I felt the positiveness. I felt, you know, that willingness to say, we don't judge. We don't care where you come from or who you are. You are who you are and that's what interest is us. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love. So it was a coup de foudre, Jason, like you've had with your beautiful twin wife. And, you know, that's what happened. And my life was always within my conscious and subconscious, having the idea of balancing it with the United States in mind as a culture, as a sense of place, and as a definition of who I could be and or become and what I would want to create, maybe eventually as a family, which I believe is the best of both worlds, is America and France together. So. This is a long answer to your question. I know you wanted it much shorter than that. But, you know, in life, when you fall in love, it's very hard to return to anything but striving to fulfill this ultimate objective that is, um, you know, that what you have in mind. And for me, this was really the U.S. That was my first love. Beautiful. Um, did you... Okay, in terms of, you're a creator. This, mm -hmm. this I know about you. You Your creativity is through the roof. Um, you, 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 you know, there's wine, which is such a huge part of your life, but there's jewelry, and there's candles, and there's glasses, and there's so much. Was there, is there something in your world you can trace back to that creativity, just so exuberant in you, just so full and flowing? Well, I think what I may trace it back is to the sense of transformation of Mother Nature. You know, from the butterfly, which is the symbol of becoming and reinventing yourself several times in your life, from that little birth to how you become, and then the wings suddenly come and you start, to seeing the evolution of season, to seeing the evolution of wine. I believe creating constantly is part of who I am thanks to that. And I believe... Uh, and, and I'm going to revert that question to you now, Jason. I see the world and life as a theater. I see the world in front of me as a stage. So I constantly want to create a new world and design actually the world I want to live in. So this has always been why I constantly from the sense of smell to the sense of jewelry, to the eye, to the ear, to everything has to really catalyze to this unique moment of creating the ultimate where everything around you is your own vision. And that's what I love. And 
I revert the question to you because you've created this amazing new phenomenal community. And, you know, how does it feel to you to have created something as like this from scratch that did not exist before? Uh, great question. I would say it, um, it's, it's been a uniquely special year. As hard as the year has been, you know, what, what do they say? Uh, there's a quote I heard a long time ago. I don't remember from whom, but it says your greatest contribution will mm -hmm. oftentimes come from the source of your greatest pain. Ooh. Okay. And, um, and so, you know, considering that I spent almost a decade in a fair amount of fear, depression, anxiety, having come through that and using those pillars that got me out of that to what I define now as freedom, not being afraid anymore, getting to create, build, dream, go. Now that I get to contribute in a way that offers that all those tools that help me so much to other people is the greatest gift of my life to offer the idea of freedom to people uh, the same things that freed me. So it's it's been a, a really special experience. And, and how do you define that freedom? Mm -hmm. So drinking bubbles. And you know, your brother-in-law is close by, so I'm going to throw the bottle at him. <laughs> there you go. He'll get you. Uh, he'll fill you up. Oh, he's Thank drinking you, out of the bottle. I wish I could turn the camera around. <laughs> and his beautiful wife, Michelle, is here. So oh. Newlyweds, we need to have a toast, by the way, as you're going to answer that tough question of freedom. Toast to Mr. Oh. and Mrs. Egan. That's right. Well, they should come and toast with you. We should see them. Boom. Um, so say their question again. Well, how, you know, how do you define freedom within this? Oh, freedom. Of being in one world, creating your own thing, and then joining another world. What is freedom to you? Uh, freedom is, is to me, um, knowing I can figure it out. Okay. That to some degree, it's, it's knowing I can figure out whatever's thrown at me. There's been a fair amount thrown at us in our lives. And we always figure it out. We always solve it. We always grow in it. Um, we always sort of go deeper in it, a along with a sense that, you know, I am known, I, I know very much that I am known, I am loved, I'm a part of a greater community yeah. that cares for me and I get to contribute. So I think that's freedom for me, knowing that whatever gets thrown my way, we can figure it out. H how about you? What's... It's, well, it's the, for me, it's really that possibility of, of eventually not understanding a word which is impossible. Hmm. So... I go by the idea that we can do anything in this world that we could possibly set our minds to. And this is absolute freedom to me, is to be able to somehow create what I imagine and actually execute on a certain imagination, whatever scale it is. And I think sometimes we all get slowed down by thinking, oh, the budget is high, or it's impossible, or it's out of reach, or I cannot do it, rather than let's do it. And I really believe, uh, you know, the tagline that Nike, you know, created many years ago, coming from our Greek goddess, Nike, of the idea of the present progressive, mm -hmm. and that it's possible to do for me is the ultimate freedom. I think we all feel belonging to a world and being somehow, you know, in prison of that world. And yeah. is how do we go on the tangent of the circle and allow ourselves to go two standard deviation away, if you wish, to be able to be oneself. And I, I would say, finally, to allow yourself to be yourself. I think the ultimate freedom for me has always been, you know, allowing myself, whether to my strength or weakness, to be myself. Yeah. And I think it's very important to allow for anyone at the turn of the year to release within themselves what holds them back and to allow and feel unjudge and go for it. And there's no better time to go for it than 2021 with a glass of 21. So I would like you know, after this long explanation of mine, 
the imagination of the bubbles. What, what image does those bubble bring whenever they caress your tongue, Jason? Whenever they go down your throat and they possess your body. So here's what I would say in the context of what you just said and what we're talking about. To me, the bubble, it, it, I, I imagine a geyser. Ooh. Ever been to Yellowstone? Yes. So Old Faithful and the bubble, you know, everything coming out. It's this, you know, your talk about being able to create your dreams, to manifest, to build, to take any vision you have and turn it into reality. That to me is like an explosion. We can call it, you know, the bubbles just going up and up and up to um and Ooh. to be yourself to create that um I, I think that's the vision for me and here's what i would say I, I love what you said there about being yourself john charles because there is such power there and here i'll tell you a, a true story so the you know i've been a fairly enthusiastic full of energy positive guy that just generally lifts people up in whatever i do but it's never been forward facing it's always been a little bit subversive. I sell whatever mm. I sell, glassware, buffetware, all this cool stuff. And I sort of did it behind the scenes. Yeah. This opportunity of COVID and Food Service Power Plant Network afforded the opportunity to be very vulnerable and um, to let those things that I'd sort of hidden from people, those yeah. that emotion, at times it's the tears. Yeah. Um, at times it's, you know, giving someone a virtual hug, all of those things that I'd sort of hidden because so they you weren't give us a virtual hug right now. Let's virtual hug. See. Ooh, we feel it. Can you, there get you go? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it afforded that to sort of be just let it all out, offer all of me very, <coughs> excuse me, very forward facing. Yes. And have the industry receive it as genuine and as warmth and not as being cheesy or, you know, anything like that. And and that has been, I would say that has been another level of freedom in this time that I, I don't well think said. I had thought about until you had said what you did. Well, how do you know, and I had this question a few days ago and I was not sure how to answer it, to be vulnerable and truly vulnerable, authentically vulnerable and allow yourself to go deep in that vulnerability that is, is then shared. How do you do that? And what are the different steps? Well, different, I mean, a great book, probably the best book I've read on vulnerability, the power of authenticity is um, Brene Brown's Dare to Something. I forget, Shannon will come in and Dare tell to me. Dream. Uh, I, I don't think it's Dare to, oh, what the heck is the book? We'll find it, Shannon will come in and yeah. tell me. Um, and, you know, it's about, it's hard to be vulnerable while you continue to judge your experience, I believe. Um, once you learn, like you said, to be comfortable being you, you no longer judge your experience and who you are. It's easy because when I'm vulnerable now with people, it, I'm, not ask, I don't, I'm not typically asking them for anything. I don't need any super positive reinforcement. I don't need them to help me figure out how to get out of it. Daring greatly, thank you. Um, Shannon just came in, daring greatly. So it, it, it's so vulnerability, once you're not judging yourself anymore, it almost opens a door for people yes. to when I don't if I'm going to share my heart with you and my story and I don't need you to fix me. I don't need you to help figure me out. I'm just opening that door. Then it's just a gift. It's something that then allows you to open a door in equal measure. And, you know, oftentimes in relationships with who you have, you open doors to varying degrees. You know, Patrick and Michelle now, of course, are family. I've known them for a long time. So the doors are pretty wide open. Yes. Um, and where, you know, people I just met a month ago, I slowly open the door and we take incremental steps. Does that, does that answer you? Yes. And, and um, I've always, um, as studying as an example, personal development and business, the deeper you allow yourself to become vulnerable. Sometimes the greater you find a solution to a path of success. Hmm. And I want to share that to a lot of our friends with us tonight is to allow in the next few days, maybe, because it's always good at the turn of the year, you know, and I don't know if you do that, but you put your resolution of the previous year in the fireplace one by one, if you've achieved them, if you want to roll them up to the next year and write new ones, but to allow, I think, anyone to go deep within, you know, one own soul. And I believe it's very important because I 
was so excited when you accepted to be with us as well tonight is to share that because you've done that personal exercise and you've done it with great success. So I commend you. Now, on that, I have a question for you. Okay. What inspires you? And I'm, I'm doing that as I'm serving, as you commented the JCB 21 bubble so well, I'm serving the Buena Vista, of course, which is absolutely that. We have the same wine. Ooh la la. I love it. You see, it fills me together in person. So what inspires you, drives you? Share that with us and the process. What inspires me? I, I, I never, Shannon, of course, what's that? Besides your beautiful wife, Shannon. Yes, yeah, cer certainly for Shannon and the kids, it's, I understand that the people in my community are, and close in my house are always watching. Right. And, um, you know, my goal, particularly with the kids is to, I want to teach them what hard work, what vision, what dreams, what confidence to accomplish those dreams looks like so that they can, you know, you know, we all talk about inheritance and most people think inheritance in terms of a financial, but we're all inheriting things. We're inheriting strength. We're inhibiting right. dreams. We're inhibiting vision. We're, you know, the all DNA of those things. Important. <laughs> Absolutely. So I want to pass those things down and so that they inherit all of that. So, so that inspires me and drives me. Um, I, I would also say I, it's both a positive. I love creating and watching things be fulfilled. I just, it, it moves me and rocks me to, to accomplish things. And there's a little bit of negative that I'm running from. I, I cannot stand the idea of regret. I do not want to leave anything on the field. I don't want to say ever that I could have been, or I could have accomplished, or I could have loved but I didn't. So it's both a positive that I'm reaching for and running to, and it's also a little bit of that negative, the, the regret that I'm running away from. Yes. Um, how about you in your life? What, there, there's always growth. There's always new great things. What is it that inspires you to continue to be great in what you do and push, you push a lot of boundaries, um, you know, in, in what you do in beautiful ways. You take people outside a box that they didn't know you could go outside. What drives that in you? Well, what drives it is, is my own person as well and where I want to go. So the, the, the very important part is to be authentically genuine to who you are, where you want to go and how you want to take those people with you. For me, I never, and it sounds terrible specifically when my parents are going to be watching this and they're going to say oh six years of university for this i don't like strategic planning <laughs> and patrick <laughs> is laughing because you know the normal cycle of a new product is 16 months if it's not done in two months for us it's a problem so you know thoughtfulness i believe is important but i'm very similar to you i don't believe in doing anything that you shouldn't be doing. And I believe in doing everything you want to do. Regret should never belong to anything and anyone today. We should never look back and be sad or be, you know, melancholic about it. We should learn from it and get a kick and move forward. So for me, it's that constant willingness to push myself. And I'm, I'm fairly tough, frankly, Jason, on myself. And I'm very demanding on my own self. And I think it helps me in general to want to continue to do things. And I'm thirsty to create. I really feel as I just turned 49, you know, because 50 was last year, minus one. So I'm going back to childhood now. Well played. For the next 50 years, I'm going to end up in diapers <laughs> one way or the other. So <laughs> I might as well account <laughs> for it. And I really believe... Um, you know, it's always to do and create and be creative and be moving forward and yeah. being, um, you know, passionate about it and being, you know, insanely contagious about what you want to communicate and bring people with you to do it. And I, I think there's nothing more fun. And to look back and said, maybe we fail, but 
there's never any failure. I'm not even sure I believe in the world failing yeah. because you always learn something from it, you know. In, in, if it's not a death or an extreme failure as such, if it's a product or something that you've created that did not impact anybody's life as such, it's fine and, and let's move forward. You know, we have a short period to live on this earth, Jason, very short. We born the same way, we go the same way. It's in between that we define who we are and every one of us, the 8 billion plus, because many were born during this COVID. That's a lot of good thing. There was a lot of action in bed on the sofa or in the cellar or in the bathroom or in the bathtub, wherever we are. There's a lot of newborn coming. It's what we create when we hear and we all are given a mission. The key as you're doing is to help people finding their mission. And that's, I think the most important in life is, you know, to somehow, you know, inspire as you are in the hospitality world for people to find new ways and direction. And on that note, Jason, where is the hospitality world going? And what's your view of all our friends from the hospitality world listening as an advice we should give them or you should give them during this difficult time? Advice to hospitality. So hospitality is obviously struggling. It's been the hardest year uh, since I've certainly been in the business. Um, people aren't traveling as much. They're not staying in hotels. They're not going to resorts. They're not eating out at restaurants, et cetera. And so there's a lot of people having to sit down and rethink probably what matters to them. Some of yeah. them are having to rethink, how do I pay my bills this month? Um, there's a whole level of processing and figuring things out. So I think it affords the opportunity to recognize for a lot of people what really matters um, and dive in there a little bit more. I think hospitality, I mean, hospitality will come back. I yeah. mean, there, there's no doubt. We it's social animals. We want each other. We want to see each other. We want to touch each other. We want to look at each other at the bar or in a hotel lobby or in a restaurant, right? Think about, I think what this gave us the opportunity to recognize during this last nine months was just what hospitality and food and drink really mean to us. It's it's about so much more than the food and the drink. Yeah. Think about it. Um, we get together and we eat and we drink when we celebrate, right? It's not a real celebration if we don't have some some wine and some cocktails and some food with us. We eat and drink when we mourn, when we're grieving. We yes. do that around food to comfort us, to connect with people. When we want to, when we have conflict with someone and we want to reconnect, what do we say? We text them when we say, hey, lunch, you want to get coffee? We do it usually over a drink or food. And so that's the bigger piece of the world we're in that yeah. I think people have recognized, wait a minute, it wasn't just about the food. And so I think there is such a thirst, no pun intended, yes. such a thirst to get back to out there to connect with people. And, um, you know, so I, I, I believe people have recognized that and that when we can, I think they're going to be run into the restaurants and run into the wineries and anywhere they can so to reclaim that. Fully agree. So what do you advise to people to do at the meantime? Because hotels are closed, restaurants are closed. I mean, you're a major force in that hospitality business. What do you recommend for people to empower themselves, to read, to learn, to take certifications online, to empower their knowledge? What, what is your view of what the hospitality, you know, executives and, and employees should be doing? The first question. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, well, I, I, I'll tell you this, the Food Service Power Plant Network, a part of how it came to, to be was right when this all happened, my, my new job was getting postponed a little bit, and I was texting with two of my college roommates and to figure out what their industries looked like and how we were all doing. And I wrote them and I said, I wonder where the opportunity is here. And so the first thing I would say is ask yourself, where is the opportunity for you to grow, to develop, to learn? I think you want to be able to come out of this and there's going to be a, a great talent pool available for so many hotels, wineries, restaurants, etc., food service manufacturers. And you want to be able to say, hey, listen, here's where I was going into COVID. 
and this is the person I am now. Here's what I learned. Here's what I studied. Here's what I developed. Here's how I yes. connected people. Um, you know, the, showing those things show, increase your value to future employers, or if you want to be a future employer, you know, whether it's delivery taking off or there's so many shoot offs of things we traditionally did in the past. There's a, a meat company not too far from me that used to just sell to restaurants. Now they're selling to restaurants and homes. They diverted a little bit. They got creative and said, we can do this here as well. Right. So I think you look for ways to take your core competency and expand it. Do you actually believe, and the question is, is a big one and I'm gonna illustrate it. Do you actually believe we're gonna come back as we were in 2019? And I'm gonna give you an illustration as you think about this sudden question, is a book I was reading on the intensity of Eros, the god of love okay. in Pompeii. And the book is all about the beautiful fresque you know, drawn on the walls and carved into the stones. And you go through Pompeii, who we all know got destroyed by the Vesuvo, the Vesuv, the famous volcano. And then at the time they said, this is the end of our society. This is the end of the world. We'll never had this. And when you look at old Pompeii, there was a wine shop. There was a fast food. There was a more in-depth dining. There was a therm, there was a spa, there were everything that we have today. And you had people writing and philosophers saying, this is the end of an era. We will never see anything like this. And look at where we are today. Mm -hmm. So this is just an idea of thoughts that, wh what is your view of that? I would say the goal should never be to go back to what was. I, I think if we're people that want to create and we want to develop and we want to invest, we can only be looking forward. Yes. Number one, I think physically, I don't know what the stat is, but what our physical bodies, right? Our cells change over, well, like every seven days or something. So physically, we're always changing. We're always moving forward. I'm not the same person today I was a week ago, just in terms of the skin. You oh, actually look a little younger than I saw you last month. What happened? Uh, I'm, I'm more sober right now. Well, I think you're taking more JCB 21 in your bathtub. That's a good thing. Uh, well, <laughs> that is a great thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And if you were uncomfortable talking about not liking strategic plans, cause your parents would be watching, recognize that everything we've talked about in my bedroom, my in-laws are watching right now. So, um, we'll call, we'll call it even, and we'll both be a, a little bit nervous about that. No, but you can call it Egan because they do the same. <laughs> That's a new family term. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I would say the goal isn't to go back. We can look back and say what was great, what was beautiful, what worked well. Let's incorporate some of those values into where we're going and figure out how do we make it better. I, I, I think we always have to look forward. And um, I have to believe that it will be better than it was in. And now I don't know what that looks like. I don't know that if that means we but value Disney, connection more. Yeah. I'm interrupting you purposely. So you remember Walt Disney creating the society of tomorrow. You remember as he was creating what, well, you know, the famous Disney phenomenal center that we know in Anaheim and the other one, he created that society, yeah. which was, you know, this amazing place where we all live in a way together. What is your view? And I know it's a big question and it's not certainly um, one that we could define that quickly, but what is the world you dream of tomorrow that will be the 2021 plus years that we live? As you said, we don't want to go back. And I agree with you. When people say, when are we going back? Going back to what? Yeah. What's the nostalgia of the past? And my New Year's note that I'm going to write tonight diligently will be about don't be nostalgic about the last generations. Every generation had its positive. And as we grow old, we bonify everything. Everything looks good from the past because we only remember the positive of history. However, what is for you the world of tomorrow within your world of hospitality and, and so forth? 
I think it's a world where the emphasis is on the person. Okay. Where you had said in your Instagram bio, uh, there's a little hashtag that says wine unites us, I yes. believe. Very right? important. Indeed. And, and so wine is your medium to unite. It's the yes. medium you see to bring people together. I see and dream of a greater emphasis on, on wine, on food, on the recognition of the value that hospitality workers in the industry really bring to unite, to connect. Part of, part of what I hope for is, you know, we all, we all want to be a part of a bigger story, right? What do they say? It's like the koi fish, I think, that you put in a small pond and it stays small. You put it in a bigger pond, a bigger lake, and it grows. It expands. Ooh. If we I can offer swim in a different lake, <laughs> <laughs> if we can <laughs> offer, I'll, I'll I'll enhance the size of the pool next year. There you go. Make it bigger. Make it bigger. If we can offer that to all our colleagues, John Charles, yes, to say, listen, you're not just serving wine. Look, yes. you're not just bringing someone a burger. You're not just washing the dishes. You're yes. a part of something that is epically beautiful that the world relies on to connect with one another, to mm -hmm. to have therapies they talk through with someone and work out challenges, all of these things. It's a really big role our industry plays. And to give people that bigger story that they can hold on to and see themselves in a brighter light, maybe they, maybe they stand up just a little bit taller. Maybe they recognize, maybe they wake up in the morning with a little greater energy. I'm not just going in and, and washing the dishes. You know what? I'm a part of something really big and really yeah. beautiful and really special. If if everyone can understand the value they play and the significance of what they do in our worlds, in our industry, uh, I think there's a whole new energy, a whole new enthusiasm, and a whole new spirit to what we all do. And I think it will be highly recognized at large by the people who visit, enjoys, and appreciate those places because the world has missed it so much. Yeah. You know, I think we truly recognize, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that um, my grandparents fought for six years on both sides of my families during the war. Wow. They were resistant, underground forces, communicating through different ways of communication. And they came out of this and said, we cannot imagine how much we love one another. And they really in a fast pace that could have been the 30s and the 40s, the 50s, 60s were, but there was a true sense of appreciation of others. And I, I hope this era that we've lived, that year, that two years, however yeah. long it's going to take, will allow us to really recognize a deep, genuine appreciation from one another, as well as what everyone is doing along the way. And on that note, Jason, this is the Chardonnay that really created the history of America. Can you believe it? In 1857, we're talking about people misunderstood in the hospitality world was the Count of Buena Vista. And can you believe what you're holding is the first, the very first Chardonnay ever brought to life in America by the Count of Buena Vista. And I think we need more. Oh my gosh. What is the history of this wine? I, I need your sensual description now. You've had the bubbles. You're wearing your red pajama, remember. You're going to be shaking that bottle very hard. And now we're going into the Chardonnay. What, this is suave. This is like a kiss. You could use a French kiss tonight. I, I don't own the trademark of it, so you could freely use it. <laughs> Remember, my brother-in-law is sitting across from you. Um, I think as long as you're romantic, he's okay, he said. <laughs> you know what? I, I would say um, this, this wine, it, it's so smooth. It, um, it almost feels, I mean, you talk about sensual. It almost feels calming. It, um, I think it represents... In terms of relationship, we'll talk about Shannon and I because we're going there. You yeah. know, it represents just that intimacy of, <laughs> of, 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 yeah, we never did. You're right. Of closeness, <laughs> of um, that connection of a, 
uh, you know, I'm going to use a word, I'm embarrassed to use it preemptively, but uh, of just like a snuggle, like a close snuggle where, um, you know, you can feel one another's breath, et cetera. And um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. What is it? What does it represent to you when you drink it? Well, this wine represents what you do with your amazing show and all your friends watching tonight or watching tomorrow is the sense of freedom. We've talked about it. Entrepreneurship, pioneering, creativity, and that no does not exist. Why? Because I think this wine is a stellar Chardonnay. I come from Burgundy, the land that really created Chardonnay back in the 14th, 13th, 15th century. We're not really fully sure, but we believe maybe the 13th century. So it was seven, eight centuries ago. This wine really represents this. And we really wanted to have this wine for you to try because for all our friends and all your friends, it's, I believe, what really represents true freedom of spirits and action. The man came out of Hungary with nothing, and he said, I'm going to do something in America. And he started the first most prominent winery at the time. And the man who brought culture, history, knowledge, know-how to the U.S. And I think that's very cool because as we're turning the year, how do we remain relevant and how does America... In the hospitality world, Jason, continues to become or to be such an innovator. What's your view on that? As we have many friends from the hospitality world, they want to hear your suggestions. You, you know, how do you continue to innovate at all and in hospitality? I think one of the first questions to always ask is, what does the extra mile look like? What is What does it look like? You know, what are the standards that most of the industry has, right? You, I, I would look at it in your world too. There's a box that was created about what wine should look like, and you sort of blew that out of the water. I've never seen wine look like what it does when I visit your wineries Thank you. um, ever. And so I think the question becomes, what is what is the extra mile look like? What is outside the box? How can we do it above and beyond to give people an experience that doesn't just move them and they don't recognize it, but where they walk in and they they – feel that sense of whether it's sensual of connection of this is different and they're caring for me. They're yes. lifting me up in a capacity to become more of me. So in terms of innovation, I think it's always what does next look like? What does different look like? And to have it done with a spirit of heart behind it. You know, everything you do, John Charles, is is it it pushes people's beliefs of what's possible and it introduces beauty in a new way. When I walk through Raymond, right, and I get the sense on the wall, all along the wall, you know, where I, I um, get the different sense. When I you look at the different a lot, so that really helped. <laughs> <laughs> I was really busy with a sense of touch. <laughs> when I go in the room, there's a room you have with a big map and different dirt, right? Different uh, dirt that you've got there. When I'm in the red room and I'm experiencing something I've never experienced before with the Baccarat and the red velvet and those, you know, it's it's pushing my boundaries of what I thought was possible and what could happen with wine. And so, and it's done in a way that moves me forward. So yeah. I think if you can create something in hospitality that offers something unique and special, you can pair different worlds um, and offers anything that someone walks into and they can be inspired by. That's I, right. I, I think is the future there. Well, on that note, let's be flamboyant and serve ourselves the passion. And then I have a, a, a very vibrant question for you. On the world of hospitality, what do you think if the chef, as an example, rethink the menu in a way? So I'm going to give you an example. Patrick and Michelle last night had a bison burger they loved it and it was great a month ago i was sharing with them just before their wedding that we did a blind tasting at the house which was compellingly enlightening for me and a few famous chef that belongs with panache in your world of hospitality 
who always believe in meat, decided to throw a curveball to the tasting. We had bison, we had beef, we had lamb, and we had a veggie burger. Same bun, same condiments, same, same, same of everything. As a Frenchman, traditionalist as a sense on the American burger that I admire and love and venerate and divine, of course, who doesn't love it? Uh, the veggie burger came first of the tastings. And it was- Did you know it was coming? I did not know it was there and it was okay. a blind tasting with wine, with this wine passion. And, you know, it was interesting. So then we had a deep discussion with those people, chef producing it. And they were saying the world tomorrow is certainly not going to be the same as before. And we're not going to eat the same way. We're not going to have the same sequence of courses, appetizer, main course, cheese and desserts or whatever. We're going to eat totally differently. So I'm asking you, Jason, how does it look like to you the next 20 or 30 years? If you had a dream, maybe, maybe it's not a visionary vision, so to speak, but it's more maybe a dream vision of the world tomorrow. What is it to you? That's a great question. Um, I mean, certainly the world is moving towards more organic and is moving towards veggies and finding a way to give people an experience they can in a way that perhaps at times feels more sustainable, et cetera. You know, I think sustainable is a great way to go personally. I mean, when I go to Raymond and I walk through the, what is it? The bio organic garden or yeah, the theater, of nature, yeah. theater of nature, um, that connection, I, I think, I think there's a longing to connect in a lot of ways. Yes. And one is to be certainly with others, with you and I and peers and family and friends and, and colleagues. But there's also a connection to be just rooted and grounded with where we stand and the earth and to know what we're eating. There's certainly been a movement towards greater transparency um, in terms of that. I want to know where this is coming from. I want to know it's here. I think that will continue. And I think it's great. I love seeing moments where, you know, like a high rise in Detroit can have a garden on the roof um, yeah. that a local chef down on the first floor is utilizing That's for, right. for right. their meals. So I think that sustainable, that local, you know, community, community always, when you're doing it together, community is one of the greatest powers we have to know we're a part of something. And yeah. so that sense of eating, even in eating, when we know we're doing it together from food grown in our place right here, I think that means something to people to know that we grew it, we farmed it, we cooked it and it's it's here, it's ours. It, it ingrains that sense of connection with your peers. So that that's what I see. Maybe I can ask you a question in terms of, in terms of wine. You've, you, in my perception, my limited perception, you've sort of been a part of creating that next frontier of wine, of what it could look like, that it could look different. What does it look like next? You're a visionary. You're always thinking about what comes next. You're, you're on that stage in the play, yes? Ooh. Um, what does next look like in terms of wine for all of us? When I come to Raymond in 10 years or Buena Vista yeah. or Deloche or wherever, what does it look like then? Well, when you come in 10 years, I will be there opening my arms and welcoming you, as you know. I, I know won't you give you a hair hug. I will give you a physical hug. Um, I, I really believe it's, um, it's continuously respecting Mother Nature. And I think we all here on this earth as a privilege, not as something that is happening, but it's a privilege to be here, so we need to respect her. So as you said, being organic, being biodynamic, working with the rhythm of Mother Nature to make very pure, phenomenal wines. But wine is only one thing. I believe more than ever, a winery, a vineyards, an agricultural land should be the place where people meet, congregate, for different activities throughout the year that really help the harvest to happen. People should be partaking in the harvest, whether it's peach, apricot, almonds, the action of touching, feeling, sensing, caressing, enjoying, you know, the fruit of the last nine months, 12 months, or 11 months of growing. 
a winery should be a sense of place where people really experience one another, vibrate, live, meet, converse, stay. And I really hope our wineries as well could welcome people within rooms where they could stay and feel the energy of the vines, can sense it and can be connected. Because I think we need to be always greatly connected to the world at large. Mother Nature, mm -hmm. the moon, the sun, the stars, and that connectivity at large that brings us with greater definition of who we are and who we want to be and how we want to serve one another. So I really see the wine world becoming even more deeper within those values yeah. and, you know, having greater ethics and having even more fun in those wineries that they become a place where we, you want to entertain, you want to celebrate and you want to live at a greater level. So this is why we created Passion. Passion is all about that. It's all about the world that is debonair, alluring, vibrant, sensual. That's it. Vivacious, charismatic, passionate, ethereal. I think a winery or the wine world ought to aim to become that a lot more. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure, I believe, Jason, in the world of hospitality, that wine and spirit should be drank in moderation so we don't here to get into a third or fourth level in our minds. We need to respect it, drink it in moderation, and really use it as getting to know everything in this world. Culture, architecture, art, conversation, poetry, literature, nature, gardening, everything that it touches. And that's why we love wine. And that's why I'm still in wine, because luckily it brings so many skills mm -hmm. around the world together. One and the foremost, the same way in hospitality. That's why I love it. John Charles, you said it uh, beautifully. It's, it's what is art? I mean, we love art so much. Because, I mean, it's beautiful and wine is art, certainly, and food is art. Um, it's because it opens up a door to... to something greater, something greater that maybe we didn't see or didn't know, a greater, greater possibilities. I, I think it's beautiful the way you describe it. Okay, can I ask you one last question? Uh, and and abs ab Absolutely. <laughs> and we can keep going as long as you want, by the way. I got no hard stop. But you are, um, you're a giver. Okay, this I know about you. Yes. This, this um, brooch, correct? I love it. The, this I brooch. You wearing it, and I saw Shannon and you holding, kissing just before the live started. And she put it on your chest and she said, My love, I would put this brooch on your nipple if you didn't have to be live. So maybe it's awaiting some excitement tonight. There's a lot of things happening in the Wangi family tonight. That is an incredible paraphrase, but I'm going to run with it. And um, I think, you know, <laughs> fingers, fingers crossed. <laughs> so this this brooch, which I think you're wearing as well. Yes. I'll, I'll tell a quick story so that um, that m our guests can know you a little bit. Um, and and actually, Gina as well. I'm holding something, a gift from Gina to Haley right oh, here. You, Thank you. You know these. So this was Shannon had a really hard experience physically four years ago that put her in the hospital. It was fairly traumatic. Patrick flew out. Everybody flew out. And we get in the mail this. Yes. From you, unexpected, along with a beautiful, beautiful note as a as an offering, as a token of your yeah, heart. I'm wearing mine, as you saw, because I obviously remembered what I sent you. I, I love it. And and we learned a lot about you in that moment. And 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 we, we knew you, but I didn't you know, it, we're always learning and growing. And when that showed up, it blew us away. Frankly, it blew us away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, Gina's gift to Haley blew us away. You're a giver. You, that's what your family does. You at Raymond, I believe it's Raymond, maybe it's other wineries. You do the Napa um, auctions where you're raising money, correct? You're doing a whole lot of contribution yeah. and charity and, and beautiful things about that. I, I guess my question is, number one, maybe you could tell our guests a little bit about what you do and explain one of the things we teach is in becoming a power plant in growing in confidence in growing in a level of energy and enthusiasm a critical component is that 
is that decision to give, is that desire to contribute. And I'd just like to know what contribution means to you and why you've been so... Contribution absolutely means to me loving others in a genuine way. So I recommend to everybody tonight to get on the balcony if they have one or in early in the morning or to get into the pool if they have one or to get outside and to undress their chest and to scream, I love others and I want to love others and I want to appreciate others and I want others to appreciate me. I was very fortunate, Jason, to really be raised in a very old fashioned way where there was no key on the door in my parents' house. People would come in, come out, you had friends, you played with others. It's not mine, it's not yours. It's not about that sense of having to literally assert yourself by what you have, but more by what you and how you appreciate it. And I think the sense of giving comes from the sense of loving. If you give, you love. If you love, you love others. And there's nothing for me more interesting, more exciting, more exhilarating, or more, you know, passionate to do in life than to be able to give to others and very importantly to share genuinely sharing great moments is what is so important as you so kindly did with the bro she received and it's and the weddings of michelle and patrick was a great moment we shared we love them and consequently we appreciate each other more and we became great friends and that's how it is and i really want to engage people to your question tonight because i have a last question for you which is a big one very big one is your last message to all of us is to say to people there's nothing more interesting than people it's not about robots it's not about computer all those are mastered by the human beings by the human mind they control by us anyhow it's getting to know people, taking the time to be with others. And that's why wine is great. You slow down, you relax, you enjoy, you get to speak to one another and, and get to know one another. And I think for me, my for Gina, who is an amazing giving lady, mm -hmm. for our ladies now, for our family and, and friends is to really have the love of others. And the moment you reach this of loving others and not wanting to fight, except for the sports of it, because it's fun in the ring, but to genuinely love others and to open your arms and say, welcome, and how can your life be different? How can we improve it? How can we guide you? How can we bring something different to who you are? I think for me is the ultimate fulfillment. There's nothing else, Jason, than enjoying a glass of wine, not breaking bread because there's no bread, but, you know, cheering with a glass and, and allowing people to become something else thanks to you. Mm. Now, are you ready for my question? Bring it. Let's oh, do it. Because this is the last one of the night. I know. Ooh la la. 7 p.m. Can you believe? We've you been in get home. Together and it feels five minutes. I know. It's been, and we're going to have to invite the newlyweds to come and have a cheer at the end. Because we, we don't want them to escape without, you know, cheering to the world how much they love each other. But I <laughs> want to, before that, I want to ask you a big question is, you know, we end all the JCB Live in 2020 with a big question is how, what is your message to others? I mean, it could not be more powerful than tonight with December 30th. Tomorrow is the 31st. That's it. We're moving into a new year. What's your message to everyone? Oh, gosh. Okay. The message, the one, the one that I would. The offer. one and only, or the one and many. Um, I would say there's many I could choose from. I'll go with this. Um, that for anyone who's watching, all our friends, all our colleagues, um, either who are working or who right now are challenged and aren't through all of this, um, I would say you have what it takes. Um, I think that is the great question most people ask. And in, in hospitality, I believe our greatest gift 
is taking care of others. Yes. It's yes. knowing how to make someone else's dream come true. People come to your wineries all the time and they're coming for an experience. They have a dream. They have a moment they've envisioned for years and you and your team help give them that experience. You help make their dreams come true. That is the hospitality person's gift. Equally, our kryptonite, our Achilles heel for many of us is knowing how to do that in our own lives. Yes. It's knowing how to make our own dreams come true. That's the challenge. That's the fear. Do I have what it takes to take a vision and turn it into reality? And even if for anyone who's watching doesn't recognize or they haven't been told they have what it takes, I'm a person that for almost 30 years didn't know I had what it takes. And a hell of a lot of people poured into me and taught me and came around me and said, you've got it, you've got it, you've got it until like, until it became my reality as I started trying it. And so for anyone who's watching that doesn't know, I would say you have what it takes not only to care for others and to love others, love others the way we all do, but to do it in our own lives, the way you create that stage in that theater and you know how to take a vision and turn it into your truth and your experience and for your wife and your girls and your employees and your teams and your guests. So everyone does in their own worlds as well to offer that boost of confidence and and your job it right now, particularly in a tough time, is to keep moving forward in the pursuit of understanding and recognizing that, you know what, I have what it takes in my own life. Woo! What a great message. And okay. maybe you should do that full time. Forget the hospitality world. Maybe <laughs> you should be just an inspirational peace speaker. I, I, become the hospitality guru of you know what the world needs in hospitality in 2021 and it's not a hint it's just a feeling that i'm just having so can we bring michelle and patrick to the stage let's do it you got to bring your glasses because they have a lot of passion they have a lot of love and as we are celebrating they need to sit both now Yes. You know, they are celebrating this amazing vintage. And we should ask them oh. now the question. <laughs> Dear friends, She's trying to run away. <laughs> She's trying to run away as She's a trapped. newlywed. <laughs> Your family, you can't run anywhere. So for everyone in my world, Patrick and Michelle are my brother and sister-in-law. And so this is a fun, really, really, really special moment. In fact, T Check. Side note, hold on. Here we go. We're bringing in the crew. <laughs> so I think we need to ask Michelle and Patrick, you know, they got married in this fantastic, fabulous year that we will never forget in history. How was it? How does it feel? And what advice do you have for others? <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> we did it. We got married during the pandemic because we wanted to have all our closest friends and family be there with us. So. And that was the most oh. Well said. And it was amazing. Patrick? Well, yeah. It's Jason, you said it very well. You said there's sometimes challenges and you just go for it and you learn. And we said, let's let's go for it. It will be different than we imagined, but it will be even better because it's special because we went through something hard to get there to the end. Well, this is beautiful. And I think we need to ask Shannon a question. How does it feel, Shannon, to be a twin? <laughs> so as John Charles asked, how does it feel to be a twin? How does it oh, feel to be a it. twin? <laughs> Say it again. I love being a twin. <laughs> Good answer. Being a twin is my favorite. <laughs> we love it. Good answer. So Patrick, how does it feel to be a Perfect. twin? Perfect. It's, no, it it's really wonderful. It's, it's great. So dear friends, to the Gemini, to the twins, to the newlyweds, to Jason, thank you so much, Jason, for being with us. Shannon, your husband is fabulous. Your daughter is incredibly gorgeous and beautiful. Ay, ay, ay. What a great dancer she is and singer, <laughs> yep. too. So next time we want to hear singing. And dear friends, I want to say thank you all for being with us. What a fun night to life, to friendship, to family. Cheers. To bring people together. Cheers. 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 You know it. John Charles, thank you for joining us. Patrick and Michelle, we love you all. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your hearts. Thanks for being a part of our community. And uh, we're all better because we had this night. So thank you. Thank you, Jason. Love you all. And Jason and Shannon, can you please send us some pictures <laughs> from the red pyjama to what's going to happen to DCB21 tonight? <laughs>
Cheers. What's, uh, things are about to get weirder in our family is what I'm recognizing. Uh, but hey, John Charles, real quick, and Patrick, where can people go to find your wine? There's been a lot of questions about finding your wine. Is it uh, Boisset Collections? Where do people go? Yes, yeah, so we put the link in the chat, but my.boissetcollection.com. And everybody tonight gets 20% off all of the wines. So Passion, Chateau Buena Vista Chardonnay. And I know it's sold out on the website. We'll fix that tonight. And then JCB 21, of course. Beautiful. Awesome. We love it. We hope you saw a lot of wine. Everyone, go enjoy some beautiful wine. You'll understand the connection, the sensual uh, experience, et cetera. And uh, you all, we really love you and we're thankful for you. I hope it's a great 2021. It will be for all of us and we can't wait to see you in person again soon. Happy New Year! Cheers. Happy New Year! Cheers! Mm. Love y'all. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. <laughs>